In this video, we're going to take a big picture look and the options available on the FortiGate firewall regarding DNS filtering. And just to make sure we're all on the same sheet of music, DNS domain name system is the way that the internet and devices on the internet can do name resolution. So if a user goes to www.mysite.com, in the background, there are computers making a DNS request to a DNS server asking that DNS server, hey, what is the actual IP address behind that name? And then once that DNS query is resolved, then the PC then proceeds to establish a connection with that site based on its IP address. So with DNS filtering on the firewall, as our clients are making these DNS requests, we can control the firewall to say, you know what, pay attention to what they're asking for and maybe or maybe not feed back the answers regarding DNS information and the IP addresses involved back to the client. And let's talk about some great reasons why we would want the firewall regarding the DNS responses that are coming back to just say no and not give them the real IP address of the site. One reason to deny the answer or the correct answer back to the PC would be if the PC is trying to go out to a website that is known to be part of a command and control network. And we might ask, why would a PC ever want to connect to a command and control network that's going to make it part of a botnet? And most of the time it's unknown to the customer. So they've got some malware that's running on the machine, making them part of a large botnet. And then the machine reaches out to the internet to a command and control network server. So if we see our PC, that's trying to resolve the IP address behind a command and control network server, we would definitely want to not feed that information back. We'd want to filter that DNS response for making it back to the client. Because if we can prevent the successful name resolution, we're also preventing the PC from reaching out to the command and control network. So what Fortinet has done for us is they've made a database regarding these command and control networks and their names, and that is dynamically updated. So we can simply train the firewall that if it ever makes a request to one of the command and control networks based on name to not respond back with the actual real IP address of that server. Another option we might want to mess with or play with DNS responses is safe search. And here's how that works. If a device is going out to, for example, Google or Bing or even YouTube and it's using safe search, the safe search option is going to help avoid any explicit and inappropriate results that are coming back to the client. And so if we enable safe search when the PC makes a request, even if the PC in their browser didn't make a safe search request, we can implement the safe search request feature at the firewall for the outbound request. The PC is going to get a response back just as if they had initiated a safe search again on YouTube or Google or Bing. Also, in addition to command and control network names, there's also a database of IPs as well, IP addresses. And so if it sees those responses, those IP addresses coming back as responses to DNS requests, it can also prevent that information from making it back to the PC. Other options include external lists. So if we have an external list of IP addresses that we do not want our clients to be able to get to, we could go ahead and keep that list on the server and the firewall could periodically check that list and enforce it. And let me rewrite external with all of its, <laughs> with all of its letters. We can also set up static DNS translation. So on the firewall, we could specify something like if the response coming back is 33.9.2.8, instead of actually feeding that literal IP address back to the client, go ahead and respond with 24.9.2.88 or some other address instead of that one. And that's what DNS translation is all about. And the way we implement DNS filtering depends a little bit on the mode that we're in. So in next generation firewall mode of profile based, and if we're in profile based, we're going to create a DNS filtering profile. And then with that profile, we'll take it and we'll attach it and associate it with a firewall policy. So this is our profile for filtering and it's just snapped on or attached to our firewall policy rule. So what you and I get to do in these upcoming videos is we're going to walk through the configuration and verification of these DNS filtering features on the FortiGate firewall. So the journey continues in the next video. I'll see you there in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.